Hello, scientists in training. Thanks for joining the Smithsonian Marine Station and Ecosystems Exhibits at Home Summer Camp Experience. Our last video described the six characteristics shared by most species of fish. Today, we will continue talking about the physical characteristics present in most species of fish, from pipefish smoothly camouflaging along the seagrass beds to strong swimming sharks navigating the open ocean, there are many species of fish. Although species of fish can sometimes look and act very different from each other, many of them share a set of basic body structures. This video will help you learn how to identify some of these structures and how they help a fish move around, navigate, and survive. To study the bodies of fish, scientists apply two branches or types of sciences. The branch of science, known as anatomy, is the study of the structure of body parts and how they relate to each other. Anatomy can answer the question, where in the body can I find a stingray's mouth? Physiology helps us find out how body parts work from the inside to keep animals alive. This science can help us answer the question, how does a stingray's mouth work? Now, let's take a look at this fish. If we draw two opposite lines that go across the fish, we get four planes or general areas of the body. The back is called the dorsal area. Where the belly is located is the ventral area. The part of the fish where the head is found can be called the anterior end, and the part where the tail is found can be called the posterior end. So we have dorsal, ventral, anterior, and posterior. This information is helpful when we try to name and identify the location of different types of fins or other parts of the body. Now let's explore the basic body structures shared between most species of fish. Much like us humans, fish need eyes to see their surroundings. They're useful to find food, shelter, mates, or to identify danger. Different fish have a great variety of eye shapes, sizes, placements, and colors, all of which help in different ways. Some pick up light better than others, depending on how the fish having them acts. For example, a short big eye fish can be found at depths of up to 300 meters, areas of the ocean so deep that sunlight doesn't really get there. Mouths mainly help fish eat and pump water towards their gills for breathing. Some fish use their mouths to send communication signals, to build underground burrows, or to protect their eggs from predators. The jawfish, for example, is a group of fishes that practices a behavior known as mouth brooding, where the male cares for the eggs and tiny little babies known as larvae inside his mouth. He does this until the babies are ready to go out into the world and fend for themselves. Fish with sharp, pointy teeth, such as this shark, tend to eat other animals. This parent fish has a beak-like mouth to scrape algae treats off of coral reefs. This stingray, on the other hand, suctions worms and shelled animals from the seafloor like a vacuum. They use a pair of jaw teeth, flat plates that crush the shells of prey, making it easier to get to a softer center. Now, let's start discussing fins. The tail end of a fish is called the caudal fin. Just like our human feet allow us to jump, run forward, and swim, the caudal fin helps fish move forward and steer from side to side. Moving towards the interior end of the body, we find a pair of pectoral fins. These would be equivalent to your human arms. Pectoral fins help fish maneuver and move forward. Dorsal fins keep fish from rolling on their sides. These come in different shapes, sizes, and configurations. Long and thin fish like eels use a continuous dorsal fin as their main form of propulsion or force for moving forward. Pelvic fins are paired 
and can be located in various positions along the ventral parts of fish. They provide stability for fish and can work as brakes, helping them stop whenever necessary. Located also on the ventral area of the body, but further back, anal fins also provide balance for swimming. The great diversity of shapes, sizes, and types of body parts found in fish are examples of adaptations, physical characteristics shared among a species of fish that help them survive in their habitat or natural home. Now that you know how to identify, name, and describe some basic body parts of fish, go to the What's a Fish module and activity packet to complete these three activities. The Fish Anatomy Song and Dance, the fish anatomy coloring diagram, and the Ocean Exploration Trust's Any Fin is Possible activity to create your very own species of fish. Thanks for watching this video. Keep learning with us at the Smithsonian Marine Station and Ecosystem Exhibits at Home Camp. Share your new species of fish on social media by tagging us on Facebook at Smithsonian Marine Station and Ecosystems Exhibit, or Twitter and Instagram at at SmithsonianSMS. Catch you next time!